Hello, today I will be demonstrating how to create and simulate a MacSec Intel FPGA IP example design targeted for an Intel Agilix 7 FPGA. The materials I will be using in this guide are the MacSec Intel FPGA IP user guide, which I will refer to as the MacSec user guide, Cordis Prime Pro software version 22.4, and Quest the Sim revision 2022.10, as well as a copy of Linux on a virtual machine. However, this design can be easily adapted to work in different simulators and operating systems as outlined in the MacSec user guide. You can find the MacSec user guide and a software download for Cordis Prime on intel.com. Additionally, please note that simulation models used in this demonstration are under export control. To get access to simulation models for this design, you will need to open a service request with Intel. You can read the MacSec user guide for more information on simulation models as well as steps to create and simulate the example design that is created in this video. This video will have two main parts. First we will create the example design using Cordis Prime, then we will simulate the example design and show some waveforms on Questasim. Before we begin the example design creation, let me give you a bit of background information on the MacSec IP and go over the IP block diagram. So, why should you be excited about the MacSec IP? Well, the MacSec IP provides data confidentiality and integrity for the Ethernet protocol by adding a small overhead at the data link layer, enabling high speed and low latency security. MacSec is commonly used for securing data between the cloud and data centers in 5G networks or secure IoT devices on a LAN. In fact, with the wider adoption of Ethernet, MacSec finds application in many areas. The MacSec IP is a highly parameterizable block and uses standard interfaces such as Axie ST and Axie Lite which can connect to other Intel FPGA IPs. Now, let's quickly review the block diagram for the example design to see a bit about how what we are creating here today will work. This block diagram is available in the MacSec user guide. Here in figure 19, we have the MacSec IP example design block diagram. You can find more details on each of the components in this block diagram throughout the user guide. But for now, let's review the general flow of data through this example design. First, it's important to note that the common port interfaces with the Ethernet IP contained on the tile. The common port contains both the controlled and uncontrolled data. The controlled data interfaces with your application logic and handles the clear text data going to and from the cryptographic engine within the MacSec IP. The flow of data goes as follows. Test packets are generated by the packet generator checker on the right side of the diagram. A given test packet is then sent through the controlled port on the port MUX here to be encrypted by the MACSIC IP and then out the other side to the port DMUX common port as an encrypted packet. Then, in this example design, the common port DMUX loops the encrypted packet back into the port MUX common port where the encrypted packet is then sent into the MACSIC IP for decryption. Once the packet is decrypted, it comes out the other end at the controlled port and through the port DMUX and back to the packet generator checker, which will check the validity of the packet. In general, the common ports in the IP refer to the transceiver end and the controlled ports refer to the FPGA or user logic end. Now that we know the basics of how this example design will work, let's get started. First, we will open Cordis Prime version 22.4. We have our demo project open here. And now let's search the IP catalog on the right for the MacSec Intel FPGA IP. Here we can see the MacSec Intel FPGA IP appears. Now I'll double click to open the IP. Now we can create an IP file for the MacSec IP variant we will be creating for our example design. Let's just call it demo.ip and create and we'll click create to create the IP file. Great, now we have created our IP file and we can select from a few menus available in this window how we would like to customize our design. 
I'll give a brief overview of some of the available options, but you can read the MacSec Intel FPGA IP user guide available at intel.com for more details on these settings. First, we have this Apology tab, which contains some main settings for the MacSec ports and crypto channels. Some important ones are the control port setting, which you can switch to have the MacSec IP perform encryption and decryption, or just encryption, or just decryption. You also have the setting for the number of TX and RX ports, with the number of TX ports setting being limited by the number of TX and RX ports maximum, which you set above. As you can see, if we set it to 6 TX plus RX ports, the maximum number of TX ports we can select is 6. And then if we change this setting back to 4, the number of TX ports we can select is 4. Additionally, you have the maximum number of crypto channels for all ports, which you can select here. Next, we have the Interface Property tab, which contains settings specific to the MacSec ports. Select Port allows us to select a port for us to edit the parameters for a specific port. User Data Width allows you to change the width of the muxed data, which is the width of the data which is entering the MacSec IP after being muxed. Port Data Width allows us to change the width of each port in the Axie ST User Interface Data Bus which is the width of the ports on the data bus outside of the MacSec IP, for example, going to the FPGA internal logic. Arbiter Ready Latency defines the association between assertion of ready signal and corresponding valid signal on the MUXED data coming out of the MUXES going into the MacSec IP. And Buffer Store Forward Enable either enables or disables store and forward mode for the port MUXES and DMUXES. Then we have the 802.1AE2018 Options tab, which contains standard options for the 802.1AE Mac Security Standard. First of all, we have Port VLAN Clear, which allows you to either choose to encrypt the VLAN tag with the payload or not to encrypt with payload but include as part of the integrity check. Then we have Validate Frames, which allows you to indicate the transmitted and received frames check level. Then we have Protect Frames, which allows us to indicate whether the frames are integrity and encryption protected, or frames passed through unchanged. Then we have Replay Protect, which disables or enables anti-replay protection for packets. And finally, we have XPN Mode, which allows us to indicate whether 64-bit extended packet number is supported in the MacSec IP. Then we have the Optional Settings tab which contains a few optional IP settings. First of all, we have SADB TX Stats Debug EN, which enables or disables the packet statistics counter for the transmitter. If this is disabled, it reduces the area the IP logic uses. You can read about statistics counters in the MacSec Intel FPGA IP user guide. Then we have SADB RX Stats Debug Enable, which in similar fashion, it enables or disables the packet statistics counter for the receiver. Likewise, if this is disabled, it reduces the area the IP logic uses. Finally, user port multi allows you to change the Axie ST controller common port between single packet mode and multi packet mode. Now, let's go to the example designs tab, which allows us to see and configure settings for generating the example design. First of all, the simulation checkbox enables the system to generate simulation file sets. If we disable this checkbox, no simulation file sets for the example design will be generated. Since we are interested in simulation, we will keep this box checked. Similarly, for the synthesis box, if we keep this checked, then we will generate all necessary file sets for synthesis of the example design. If we uncheck this box, then file sets for synthesis of the example design will not be generated. Next, we have a generated HDL format drop-down menu, which allows you to select the HDL used in the generated files. Only Verilog is supported at this time, so we'll leave this option as is. Then, we have an option to select the development kit for the example design target. Since we are simply simulating the design, we will leave this setting as none. Finally, let's take a look at this small but important section of text in the example designs tab. 
This section is a guide for the settings to use for generating example designs of different IP configurations. The Agilix 7 devices support two different transceiver tiles depending on the specific device. These tiles contain the Ethernet blocks used to interface to the MaxSec IP. For more information on these tiles, you can refer to the Intel Agilix FPGA portfolio at intel.com. The top section here shows supported parameters for e-tile Ethernet example designs, and the lower section shows supported parameters for f-tile Ethernet example designs. Let's go ahead and choose settings to generate a 1x100GB example design on an f-tile transceiver. Here we can see that we need to select two TX and RX ports and one TX port, as well as a data width of 256. Let's go to the Topology tab to select these settings. Here we have two TX and RX ports and one TX port. Now we can go to the Interface Property tab and change the port data width to 256. Okay, now we are ready to generate the example design. Let's go up here and click Generate the Example Design to generate the example design. Now we can select a directory to place our example design. The tool has already created a new directory and this path looks fine to me, so I'm going to select OK. And now we wait as the example design is generated. I'll fast forward now to the point where the system is finished so you don't have to wait. OK. Now, as we can see, the example design is finished generating. Let's take a look at the generated file structure. Here in the command line, we can see that our in our project directory, a new directory, uh, the example design directory here, uh, was created, which should contain the example design. Let's enter that directory and list the contents. Here we have various files as well as files for the example design and test bench files. We are interested in the test bench, so we'll enter the example test bench directory. Here we go. Now you can see the various simulation run scripts that were created when we generated the example design. There are files for Synopsys VCS, VCS MX, and QuestSim. Today we'll be using QuestSim 2022.10 to simulate the generated test bench. To run simulation for QuestSim, I'll simply use the command vsim-do run underscore vsim.do. There are commands for the other simulators listed in the MaxSec user guide in addition to this one. Alright, looks like simulation has begun. Uh, so I'll just fast forward to when the simulation finishes so you don't have to wait. Great! Now as we can see, simulation is passed. Once simulation passes, then we should see a message in the Quest the Sim transcript that looks like this, saying simulation has passed and test bench complete. Now let's take a look at the simulated waveform and see some packets going in and out through the MaxSec example design. Okay, I've done a bit of work to group together the signals we would like to see on the waveform viewer. Signals will be grouped as controlled if they are on the FPGA logic side, and signals will be grouped as common if they are on the transceiver side. You can see which signals belong to the common and controlled groups by reviewing the interface overview section of the MaxSec user guide. Here are some important signals and the paths to their signals. Here we've got T-data, uh, T-valid, and T-keep. And you can uh, replicate these paths in your similar system when you run simulation. OK, now we can trace some simulated Ethernet packets through the waveform viewer. Let's zoom in on each of the groups to see the functionality. Here we can see that we have data coming from the packet generator slash checker and being sent into the MaxSec IP to be encrypted. These are signals in the encrypt controlled group we made. Here we have data on the T data signal. Um, notice that this data is only valid 
while the T-valid signal is asserted, which we see asserted throughout this time frame. And also note that a data transfer happens when both signals T-valid and T-ready are both asserted. Okay, now let's zoom out and see the encrypted data being sent out of the system through the transceiver tile. These are signals in the encrypt common group, which we made. Similarly, we can see the encrypted data being sent here in areas where T-ready and T-valid are enabled over the T-data signal. Now we can collapse these groups and look at the decrypt path for data being received into the system. Now we can see the encrypted data being sent through the common port on the transceiver side of the FPGA and into the MACSEC for decryption and out the controlled port and into the packet generator and checker or where the FPGA internal logic would be. Okay, that concludes the tutorial on how to create a MACSEC Intel FPGA IP example design on Cordis 22.4 and simulate the design using Quest the Sim revision 2022.10. You can visit intel.com for more information on the MacSec Intel FPGA IP. I hope this video was informative and thanks for watching.